This video will explain Marx's definition of ideology. Um, but before we talk about Marx, we have to rewind a little bit and go back to post-revolutionary France in the late 18th century. Uh, the word ideology was first used by an aristocrat by the name of Antoine de Stout de Tracy, who we'll just refer to as Tracy from now on so I don't have to continuously butcher the French. Um, he was put in charge of the Institute of France, which was sort of, you can think of it as the overarching Institute of Education in France. Uh, and he first uses the word ideology in his work titled Memoir on the Faculty of Thinking. This he publishes in 1796. Um, so I'm going to read you an excerpt from this uh, where he first uses this term, and we'll get an idea of his meaning behind it. He says, I would much prefer that we adopt the name of ideology, or science of ideas. Its meaning is very clear to anybody, if we consider only that of the French word idée, because everyone knows what is meant by an idea, but few people know well what it is. This word has another advantage, that in giving the name of ideology to the science which results from the analysis of sensation, we indicate at the same time the object and the means. And if our doctrine is found to differ from that of some other philosophies which cultivate the same science, reason is given of advance. It is that we seek the knowledge of man only in the analysis of his faculties. Tracy establishes ideology as the science of ideas, or the study of ideas, which makes sense if we break the word down, idea and ology, the study of ideas, right? That makes sense. What he's getting at here in general is what we now refer to as psychology is probably what would be uh, the best correlate in modern times. The science of why people think, uh, physically uh, sense the world around them. Um, and Tracy takes this even a step further in arguing that ideology should be the top science uh, from which every other science is understood. And through his role at the Institute of France, he circulates pamphlets and um, writings to all the professors and teachers throughout France uh, urging them to first teach the fundamentals of ideology before they teach any other science. First to teach how people think, uh, how sensations come about in the physical body, and then once that understanding is sound to teach people about uh, philosophy and history and biology and so on. He even goes as far as, uh, in 1797, he alters the French Encyclopedia's hierarchy of science, replacing the top, which was theology, with ideology. Uh, so the implications here are clear. Interestingly, it's important to think about post-revolutionary France and what was going on with the secularization of society. It would make sense for the science of ideology to replace the study of religion in the top spot uh, in France's hierarchy of the sciences. So Tracy establishes ideology as the study of science, ideology. That usage isn't, is used by no one anymore. Uh, it's sort of outdated. It went away after the Napoleonic era when Tracy and Napoleon and the other ideologists uh, had conflicting ideas uh, of what they thought should be uh, sort of the ethos in France at the time. So Tracy establishes ideology as a science of ideas, but that quickly falls out of favor and no one uses it. But it's important for us to understand where the term came from uh, as the science of ideas. Marx sort of picks up the term from there, though alters its meanings and connotations drastically. And the biggest contribution that Marx makes to this concept of ideology is by associating class and power with ideology. And these, the concept that ideas are directly related to uh, social circumstances uh, and material condition. And his argument is that the ideas of any given time are a result of the economic system, the modes of production of any given time. So from a Marxist perspective, the ideas of, say, feudalism uh, are drastically different than the ideas that define the era that might be capitalistic. Uh, and we'll be exploring those throughout our conversations. Um, so I think that makes sense on the surface. I'm going to read a quote from one of Marx's works 
the, where he goes into depth of his theories of ideology and their relation to class and power. So this is from the German ideology, and this section is titled Ruling Class and Ruling Ideas. Uh, quote, the ideas of the ruling class are in every epoch the ruling ideas, i.e. the class, which is the ruling material force of society, is at the same time its ruling intellectual force. The class, which has the means of material production at its disposal, has control at the same time over the means of mental production, so that thereby, generally speaking, the ideas of those who lack the means of mental production are subject to it. The individuals composing the ruling class possess, among other things, consciousness, and therefore think. Insofar, therefore, as they rule as a class and determine the extent and compass of an epoch, it is self-evident that they do this in its whole range, hence, among the other things, rule also as thinkers, as producers of ideas, and regulate the production and distribution of the ideas of their age. Thus, their ideas are the ruling ideas of the epic. So Marx argues that the ruling class in society, that he calls the bourgeoisie, maintain control over the institutions of society that establish the way that people think. So if we investigate which institutions are responsible for the ways that people think, th there's very obvious ones. Right? The institution of education, the legal institutions, uh, the media right nowadays in modern times that control the norms in our society, the news that we see, uh, and so on. All of these drastically impact the way that people in any given society think. For Marx, the lower class, which he calls the proletariat, accept the ideologies of the bourgeoisie. And that is one of the functions of the bourgeoisie that allows them to perpetuate themselves and perpetuate the power structures at which they find themselves at the top is by having their ideas be disseminated throughout society and be accepted as the general ideas of society. And further, they are so successful at doing this that they convince the proletariat that the ideas of the bourgeoisie actually serve the proletariat themselves. He calls this false class consciousness. So if we could sum up the Marxist conception of ideology, ideology for Marx equals false class consciousness. What he means by false class consciousness is that the proletariat have an ideology, a system of beliefs, a way of viewing the world, a perspective on the way that things are, that doesn't actually serve them. That is the antithesis of their material existence. It's the opposite of the way that they exist in the real world that in fact they've adopted the ideas of the upper class and think that it serves them as the proletariat, but it doesn't actually, that the real world is different than the bourgeoisie are telling the proletariat that it is. They have this false consciousness. They think that they sort of know what the world is about, but they don't. That the ide ideology of the bourgeoisie that they've adopted is actually different than reality. There's, it's sort of an illusion, uh, if that helps to think of it in that context. Now Marx doesn't give us a lot of specifics of how this happens, how exactly the bourgeoisie go about propagating their ideology so successfully that everyone in society uh, adopts it. He doesn't tell us how they manipulate the institutions of education or the media, etc. When we get to the Frankfurt School and Gramsci and some of the other theories on ideology, we'll fill in some of those gaps. But the Marxist conception of ideology uh, in general is just that Ideology is a system of beliefs that the ruling class in any epoch disseminate and propagate and convince everyone else to accept. And of course, it's obvious that those ideas serve the ruling class. Um, the ideas of the ruling class serve themselves, serve their positions at the top of the hierarchy, and perpetuate their position at the top of the social pyramid. Um, so that's the Marxist conception of ideology in a nutshell.